Hello students, welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children, we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class. So come on, let's proceed to our lesson for today. And since this is our first lesson for the year, we are just going to take a look at our textbook. We will try and find out what are the lessons which are there in our textbook. We will try and see how many units are there in our textbook this year for us to learn. So first let's take a look at the textbook. Now if you all have your textbooks with you right now, you can open it and you will see that this is the cover page. So this is such a beautiful picture where you can see a deer and the antlers of the deer and there are so many books. That means there are so many things that you can learn from mother nature. So in this textbook you will see that a lot of lessons are derived from nature. It will teach us about nature about how to conserve nature and about how to make this world a better place for all of us to live in. When you go to the back page, you will see that it is a continuation of the front page. So when you open the front page, when you look at the front page of your textbook, you will be able to see the left side antler of the deer and the back page shows you the right side antler and I need not tell you now we are in the ninth standard so anytime when we do a description of the textbook we know that the ninth standard textbook is called as the Kumar Bharati okay up to standard eighth you had textbooks which we used to call as the Bal Bharati textbook and then you look at the uh, logo there be below, you will see the name of the Maharashtra State Bureau of Textbook Production and Curriculum Research, Pune, which we also call as the MSCERT. And the cost of the textbook also is given to us. So this is an analysis or we are just going through the textbook. Okay, this, are, this is the outer part of the textbook. Now, let us go in and let's glance at what all things we are going to learn this year as part of our 9th standard English syllabus. So, we have the contents page now with us. In the beginning, you will see that we have a let's begin part where you will be given an introduction to this textbook about how many people have put in their efforts in order to make this textbook available to you, who are the printers, who are the people who have edited this textbook, etc. And then children, if you notice, we have four units. Unit 1, in which you have five lessons. Unit 2, in which you have six lessons. Unit 3, you have four lessons. And Unit 4, again, you have five lessons. All right? Now, a new thing which has come in into our textbooks for the last few years, since the last few years, is this barcode that you can see. So, when you have an Android mobile, in case you have an Android mobile with you, you can use a barcode scanner. It is something which you can download into your phone. And you can also make use of the barcode scanner in order to find out it at a glance on your mobile what all are the contents of this textbook okay so that is how we have used technology into our textbooks so this was about the contents or the syllabus for standard 9th this year as we all know our academic year is usually broken up into two parts we divide it into the first semester and the second semester. Unfortunately, this year we are beginning 
our studies on a different entirely different kind of a platform so let us start now by going to lesson number 1 that is unit 1 lesson 1 we will call it as lesson number 1.1 and the name of the lesson is life now this is a poem which is written by this lady that you can see here on the screen you might be seeing a an arrow moving on the screen all right now i will use this arrow sometimes on and off when i want to highlight certain things to you or when i want to show you certain things when i want to draw your attention towards certain things so this lady here her name is charlotte bronte and she is the person who is the poetess now who's a poetess like we have an author who writes the prose part of your lessons we have poets and we have poetesses who write the poetry part of your syllabus now our english language content syllabus is divided into prose poetry and grammar isn't it so now our very first lesson for this year will be one which is based on grammar sorry on poetry so this children is our poem life now i am going to take some time and we will read the poem and i will try and explain the meaning of the poem to you in short okay now remember we are creating condensed lessons that is i will not be able to devote half an hour or 35 minutes to teach you this particular lesson so i will have to condense it i will have to make it shorter but we are going to try and see to it that we deliver the best quality lessons to you so let me start by reading this poem life so what is the name of our poem it is life so life believe is not a dream so dark as sages say as we go along i will try and explain the meanings of the words which appear here so they are saying that life is not a dream charlotte bronte wants to tell us that life it is not a dream and it is not dark also now what kind of dreams do you like to have we always like to have dreams which are pleasant which are good isn't it we do not like nightmares so what are nightmares they are a nightmare is another word for a bad dream so none of us we like we do not like bad dreams right all of us we like to see good dreams but some sages they say that life is very dark what is the meaning of dark here dark means sad dark means difficult okay so they are saying that life is not dark like many sages who are sages sages are were people who are very knowledgeable like we say pandits okay like we uh, say the people who are very educated or who have a lot of knowledge about things in life those people are called as sages and in indian languages we call them as rishis or munis okay oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day that means sometimes there's a little bit of rain in the morning a little rain okay when it is heavy rain we get worried but when it is a slight layer rain when it is a little rain we are happy we feel happy because we know that the day is going to be very pleasant sometimes there are clouds of gloom but these are all transient that means what now see look at the situation that we are in today we are in the middle of the covid crisis this we can compare it to the clouds of gloom means we are in a very difficult situation now we are in a very sad situation now most of us are worried but always remember children 
that this is transient. What is the meaning of transient? Transient means this is not going to be permanent. This will pass. Alright? Like there are bad times. We are going through bad times now. Very soon we will have very good times. Okay? If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh why lament its fall? That is if there is a rain. But because of this rain, you can see flowers blooming around you. You know that plants and trees and even all kinds of living things. We need rains, isn't it? So when we are when we are so dependent on rains, we should not be sad that it is raining. Many of us do not like the rainy season because sometimes there are no trains and sometimes when it rains, the power cut gets uh, disrupted, the power gets disrupted. So we do not like rains. But remember that rains are very, very important if the flowers have to bloom, if the nature has to survive. Rapidly, merrily, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerfully enjoy them as they fly. So, rapidly, life passes very fast. Now, just now you were in the 8th standard and now you are in the 9th standard. So, you see how fast your life has changed. So, life goes by very quickly. So, what should you do? Instead of sitting and crying, Instead of sitting and feeling bad and sorry for things, you should enjoy them. Okay? What though death at times steps in and calls our best away? What though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway? Now these are things which are, you know, very, very bad for us to imagine. Now during this COVID crisis also, we saw that many people lost their lives. So imagine how their uh, family must have felt. All of them would have been very sad and sorry, isn't it? That it is so bad that sometimes death comes in suddenly, unexpectedly and people who are close to us, they sometimes pass away. And at those times, what do we feel? We feel that our sorrow is winning. Alright, we feel that our life has become very sad, it has become very sorry and we feel that there is nothing, no hope or no happiness for us now. But remember, yet hope again elastic springs. But after some days, what happens? Again, we start looking forward to new things. So hope again, elastic. Do you know how an elastic works? When you pull it and when you let it go, it springs back. Unconquered Though she fell, still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear us well. So hope is something which will always keep us giving, keep giving us new will to live. Alright, now we come to the last four lines of this poem. Manfully, fearlessly, the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously can courage quell despair. So what they are saying, what the poetess wants to tell us, Charlotte Bronte, what does she want to tell us? Manfully, manfully means very bravely. Now these words are all synonyms. Okay, now when we do English grammar, we know that there is a, there is a certain category of words which we call as synonyms. Synonyms means what? Words which have the same meaning. So manfully and fearlessly, both of them have the same meaning. That is, nidar hoke, in not being scared at all. The day of trial bear. Whenever you have an examination, you should be prepared for it. You should be brave enough and you should face the examination. Now the examination might be in an examination hall which your teachers are conducting or it could also be an exam in your life. Because remember, if you appear bravely for the exam, then you will win. You will be a glorious, victorious person. Alright children, so this was the explanation of this poem, Life. So I hope you have understood what it means. But let us once again take a glimpse of what this poem wants to tell us. So the Life is a poem written by Charlotte Bronte. In which she describes that life comes with bad times, 
followed by good times. So when there are bad times, don't lose hope. And when there are good times, always remember and be prepared for the bad time which might come. The poet poem describes that life is full of sorrowful times and also happy times. She encourages people to see the sunny things and roses blooming as they last. She also says that even during times of great adversity, now adversity means bad times, okay? This is a new word like the death of a loved one, hope like buoyant golden wings. Buoyant means what? Something which you, for example, if you take a rubber ball and if you put it on the surface of water and you push it down, it will come rushing back upwards. That is called buoyancy. Now you must have to learnt about this term in your science lessons. So like buoyant golden wings, wings which rise up even though you push it down, is the only feeling that will rescue us. And so we should always be hopeful at all. So children, that was the poem written by Charlotte Bront, that is The Life. So we read the poem and I explained uh, the meaning of the poem to you. Now children, in every lesson in your textbook, we have some part of a grammar which is to be done. So now let us very quickly move on to the grammar part in your lesson. That is, we have to look at rhetorical questions. So let us look at what the meaning of rhetorical questions are. And also we will try and cover whatever other grammar points are there in your lesson for today. So let us uh, start by looking at what all grammar points or what all language study points are there in our lesson. So we have this particular language study point called as rhetorical questions. Along with this, if you have your English textbooks with you, you can open it. You can come to page number four. You will see that there are certain points in figures of speech also which are used, which are uh, shown in this particular uh, lesson. We will do that also later. Let us first start with trying to understand this particular language point, which is rhetorical questions. So what are rhetorical questions, children? Rhetorical questions are a type of questions, you can say. Okay, and what are questions? We have been learning since we were very young, isn't it? So we have four kind of sentences we have learned. We have assertive sentences. We have exclamatory sentences. And one of the type of sentences is an interrogative sentence. So an interrogative sentence is a sentence where we want some information. We make use of the sentence when we want some information from someone else. And when we have an interrogative sentence, it is always, always ends with a question mark. All right. So now rhetorical questions are a little different from our ordinary interrogative sentence or our ordinary questions. There is just one similarity here that in a rhetorical question also we make use of question marks. So let us see how a rhetorical question is similar to our question and how it is different and what is the meaning of a rhetorical question. So in these three points we will be able to understand what a rhetorical question is. So when a question is posed to make a point and not because you want an answer. So there are some times, there are certain situations where you want to make a point. You do not want an answer. All right. And why do you not want an answer? Let's go to point number two. Because the answer is obvious and it does not need to be stated. Okay. So you are asking a question. That is the way you are toning your uh, sentence. You are asking a question, but you do not want the answer to the question. Your question itself is the answer. Then why do you ask such rhetorical questions when I don't want an answer? Why am I asking this question? You are asking it to create a stronger effect. Okay, you want to create a better, a stronger effect. And sometimes, you know, you do not want to say things directly. Sometimes you want to be a little diplomatic. You do not want to say things directly. And at those times also we make use of a rhetorical question. So let us look at some examples, children, of rhetorical questions here. So how could you? The first question, see, how could you? That means you should not have done this. How could you do this? So that is, I am telling you that you should not have done this. But the way I am telling you this is in the form of a question. Is this a joke? 
are you crazy why is this happening to me who cares does money grow on trees so all these questions you will see that they answer themselves so when i say is this a joke i want to say that this is not a joke please understand that this is not a joke okay so in the same way you can when you read all the sentences and try to derive the meaning from this it means that these sentences are giving their own answers okay these rhetorical questions are answering themselves there is no need for you to expect that the other person will answer you so these are rhetorical questions we will look at some more examples of a rhetorical question or we will uh, look at some exercises of a rhetorical question so look at this which of the following questions would be considered rhetorical so what do you think look at the four options given to you can you do me a favor are you really that stupid what is the weather like why are you sad so when i look at analyze each one of them can you do me a favor when i ask this to someone i expect that person to answer in yes or in no right when i say are you really that stupid that means i think or i believe that that person is really stupid what is the weather like here also i'm expecting an answer maybe i'm planning to go somewhere and i want to know whether it is the right time to go or not and why are you sad here i'm asking for a reason okay so after knowing and after reading and after trying to understand these four sentences what do you think which could be the rhetorical question yes it is question number 2 which is the rhetorical question okay so simple let's come to one more example which of the following questions would be considered rhetorical there is no point is there which is the capital of punjab what is the staple food of people in coastal areas is there a grocery store down the street again analyze them let's come from point number 4 to point number 1 is there a grocery store down the street so i expect an answer in yes or no what is the staple food of people in the coastal areas i expect a descriptive answer which is the capital of punjab i expect the fact to be stated there is no point is there what am i doing i am answering myself that there is no point so children which is a rhetorical question among these four it is question number 1 or answer number 1 okay so these are some examples of rhetorical question we have already uh, done this in the lower classes okay so this was one kind of a brush up for you and remember we have a time constraint over here so we will not dwell too much on one particular point let's go to the next part of our lesson now we are going to talk about figures of speech so figures of speech are a tool of english language which are used especially in poems okay it is a part of learning poetry so there are various figures of speech let us look at a few of them there are some which are supposed to be studied as part of this lesson so we will look at them only today but as an overview let us try and understand what are the various figures of speech in english so you have simile metaphor personification apostrophe metonymy we have synecdoche we have onomatopoeia we have alliteration assonance and pun there are many more also but at the school level we make we learn all these and today we will talk about metaphor and we will talk about personification okay so come on let's without let's go without wasting time directly to our first point over here so metaphor so what is a metaphor when you compare two things but you do not wor use words like like or as but you say that one thing is the other you directly state that one thing is the other then it is a metaphor for example look at the sentence here the apple is green the apple is a little green sun bright and round so you are comparing apple to the sun you are saying that the apple is the sun okay and then in the second example apples are nature's candy candy means chocolates okay so here are examples of metaphor now metaphor simile these are all the basic figures of speech which we have been learning since the 6th and the 7th standards some more example of a metaphor 
a comparison in which one thing is said to be another. Look at the example. She is a walking dictionary. So how could she be a walking dictionary? Is it possible for a person to be a walking dictionary? Not literally, but in a way, yes, if a person has got a lot of knowledge about words, okay, and the use of words, if the vocabulary of a person is very good, then you could sometimes state that the person is a walking dictionary. So it is a case of metaphor. All right. Now we now let's go back, go ahead and watch a small clip about what metaphors are in which you will see various examples of metaphors so let's do that before we proceed with the lesson So children, that was metaphor for you. Now let's look at the uh, second figure of speech for today quickly. Personification. So what is personification? When you give human qualities to animals or objects, then it is an example of personification. Now human beings have certain unique qualities. We can sing, okay, we can laugh, we can speak. But animals and objects, inanimate things, they cannot do all this. But when you give these human qualities to either animals or objects, then it is called as personification. There is one example here on the screen for you. The stars winked at me. Okay, so winking means making a movement with your eye. So the stars don't have eyes. So can they wink? The answer is no. So this is an example of personification. See, there are some more examples. The car danced. Okay. The angry clouds marched. Now the clouds do not have any kind of emotions. They cannot be angry. The stars in the clear sky winked at me. Again, we saw the star winking example in the previous slide. The tulips nodded their heads. Now tulips don't have heads. Okay, flowers don't have heads. But they are saying that they nodded their heads. And nodding is also a movement which is, you can say, unique to animals and human beings. So here, yeah, these are all examples of personification. So children, wasn't that a wonderful video? And did you enjoy watching it? So if you want to watch more such videos in future, then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel, the MCGM Portal for Education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video here. Thank you so much for now. Let's meet again soon.